Despite having zero technical background, I've noticed the best AI users aren't necessarily the engineers. Instead, they're professionals who have created systems that encourage regular use of AI tools. And since prompting is currently still the main way most people interact with AI, they found ways to make prompting so easy that it becomes automatic in their daily work. In this video, I'll show you how to build a simple prompts database in Notion that will not only save you hours each week, but more importantly, will also give you a sustainable system to keep up with AI. Let's get started. Before we begin building, let me quickly show you what the end result looks like. Let's say I come across this potentially useful prompt online, but I don't want this interrupting my workflow. So I would just simply select the entire prompt, copy it, open up my prompts database, click the new prompt button, give this a meaningful name, make copy concise, and clear and paste this down here. Press escape to exit so I can go back to what I was doing before. Now, during one of my weekly review sessions, I can revisit these prompts I've saved throughout the week, test them to see if they're actually applicable to my needs. And if yes, I can add tags to ensure I can easily find them when needed. To make things easier for you, I've added a link in the description to this partial template for you to duplicate. Don't worry, I've done most of the heavy lifting and you can ignore the FA you see on screen here. It's just there to remind me this is the follow along version. All right, now we can click anywhere below the quick links uh, section and type forward slash callout to make a callout box, enter. We're gonna name this a quick action and I'm gonna bold this like so. And I'm gonna press enter, three hyphens, one, two, three, to create a line. And I'm gonna change the icon here, make this blue, and we're gonna choose the target um, icon right there. We're gonna drag this up above the quick links section like so. And with this highlighted, or selected rather, I'm gonna press command and control D to make a duplicate. I'm gonna drag this all the way to the right here, and I'm gonna name this pinned. I'm gonna bold the text here, and I'm, I'm gonna choose a pinned icon, like so. Now, I'm gonna drag the quick links callout box below the quick actions one, so that the pinned box has a separate column to the right here. Next, we're gonna scroll down a little bit, and we're gonna type uh, hashtag, hashtag space, to create a header two, op center, operation center, space, blue. You can choose whatever color you want. Press enter again, three hyphens, one, two, three. We're gonna come back up and we're gonna create a button that you saw in action earlier, forward slash button. Enter, name this new prompt. We're gonna change this to the plus icon, but I want this to be gray to add some contrast like so. So when the button is clicked, we're going to do something. And that thing we're going to do, we're going to add the new action. Add page two. We're going to select this database down here. All right, you should see YT for me is FA, so don't get confused. You're going to select the FA, uh, the prompts database only selection. So again, make sure this selection matches this. All right, that's very important. Um, the new prompt template should populate automatically because I created that for you as well. Why am I such an angel? Edit property, we're gonna select type, and all new prompts should be marked as capture. You'll see why later. And finally, the add action here, we're gonna open that new page we saved. Select page, we're gonna select the page added, and we're gonna open that in side peak. Let's quickly recap what we just did. We created a new button that when clicked, adds a page to our raw prompts database table using the template that I've provided. The type will automatically update to captured, and we're gonna open that newly created page in side peak view. So let's click done and test this out. We're gonna click the button. We're gonna name this uh, prompt to save the world. And we see that indeed the type property has been automatically updated to the captured status. We'll go over the page content later, but for now, we're gonna click into the raw prompts database table view, and you'll see that in addition to some examples I prepared ahead of time, that yes, indeed, our prompt to save the world has been successfully captured. We're now gonna press Command and Control Enter to expand the raw database to full screen. And you see that I've already prepared two views for you, active and all. The only difference being that in the active view, 
I've set the filter to type is not archive. Speaking of properties, let's go through some of these. Uh, we're gonna skip the type property for now. For use case, this is pretty self-explanatory. We're simply tagging the prompt with the category of task it's supposed to help with. Copywriting, business operations, or let's say data analysis. Output format tells us whether the result is in text, image, or video format. Uh, for the app property, we should only add a selection if the prompt works in a specific app. So in this case, these three are all empty because these three text-to-text -text prompts work across ChatGPT, Claude, Google Gemini, so they're not bound to a specific app. In contrast, I've only used this text-to-image prompt in Midjourney, so I know it works well on that platform specifically. And it's always helpful to include an example image output in another property so you know what to expect. And I know what you're thinking right now, Jeff, you look so much better in real life as opposed to what's being represented here in this image. I don't disagree, but I'm a very humble person, so I like to, you know, tone things down a little. Um, last but not least, and this applies to all Notion databases, by the way, you should always create a last edit time and create a time property because this helps with sorting. For example, here you can see that I've already added a sort that says last edited time to sending. So the most recently added prompts are always shown at the very top. Now that we're familiar with the raw database table, we're gonna click the breadcrumbs up here to go back up a page. And under quick actions, click anywhere to the right of the button like this, press enter to create a new line. And we're gonna type forward slash table, table view, enter. And we're gonna click link to existing database and we're gonna link to our prompts database that we went through just now, like so, we're gonna select that. And we're gonna select the all view right here. And under layout, I'm gonna change the layout to a list. We're gonna to toggle off the database title, like so, go back. Under properties, we're gonna show uh, the type property only. So you see captured the captured property show up. Go back and under filter, I'm gonna select type equals to captured like so, all right? And I'm gonna click save for everyone. If you don't see this, don't worry. I'm using the team space version. If you're using the personal version of Notion, you should not see this. And we're gonna click back like so. Next, right click on the all view, rename, and we're gonna change this to inbox and we're gonna change the icon to a tray like so. And now everything we see here, are prompts we've captured but have not tested and organized yet. Put another way, if we were to change the capture type to let's say, for example, personal, it disappears from the inbox view, right? I'm gonna press Command and Control Z to bring that back first. Now, instead of going through all that again, we're simply gonna select the inbox view we created, Command and Control C to make a copy, head on over to the pinned callout box, Command and Control V to paste the inbox view we just created. And once this actually loads, we're gonna change this, we're gonna rename this to Essentials. We're gonna change the icon to a wand. And under Properties, instead of showing type, we are going to show the use case, give me a second, use case like so, go back. And under Filter, instead of filtering for Captured, we're actually gonna select All Only. Okay, so type equals all. And once that is done, I'm gonna say for everyone and you should be left with something like this. Now, watch what happens when I change the type property from capture to all. We see that the prompt has shifted from the inbox view to the essentials view, right? At this point, many of you have probably already realized what's going on. The type property represents the area of my life the prompt is relevant for. Is it relevant for my personal life, my business, the workplace, or all of the above. And since the all prompts are used most frequently, I like to keep them pinned on the right here with a use case tag visible for easy reference. Pro tip, you can select the new prompt button here, press Command and Control C, and paste that anywhere in your workspace to make the capture step more seamless. For example, in my command center, right, under the quick capture section here, I have a new prompt button so that I don't have to navigate away when I come across a prompt I wanna capture. I'm actually in the middle of creating an entire course that teaches you how to create your own command center, so I'll leave a link to the waitlist down below. Moving down to the ops center, we're gonna type forward slash table, table view, 
We're going to choose link to existing database and we're going to choose the database only uh, table and we're going to select the all view. All right. And under this all view under layout, we're going to just toggle off the database title for now. That's it. Go back and right click the all view. We're going to make a duplicate and we're going to name this personal. We're going to change the icon here to a smiley face smile because it's our personal stuff. There we go. And we're going to change the layout to a gallery and we're going to change the card preview to none card size small. We're going to go back. We're going to add uh, a property. We're going to make the uh, app property visible only. You'll see why in a bit. And we're going to go down to group and we're going to group by use case like so go back again and finally under filter we're going to choose type equals to personal right because this is a personal view we're only going to filter for personal related prompts and don't worry about this being empty for now and we're gonna i'm just gonna move this view to the left like so now that we've got the personal view set up we can easily right click and make a duplicate of this name this uh, my business. Let's change this to a laptop. And we're going to just change the filter from personal to my business, right? Deselect personal, choose my business and move this to the uh, left here. And we're going to make right click again, make another duplicate of this to workplace. And we're going to change the icon here to a briefcase. And we're going to change the filter from my business to workplace like so. Now all that's set up, imagine I were processing the captured prompts up here. I'm going to change the type from captured to workplace and aha, the prompt shows up, right? And let's say I change this from captured to business. Under business, we can now see multiple prompts um, grouped by use case. Pro tip, the reason I kept the all view under op center is we can quickly search for any prompt by clicking the magnifying glass icon and typing a keyword like so. All right, now let's see this database in action. I come across this prompt online that analyzes data sets. All I do is I simply highlight the prompt, make a copy of this, go to my prompts database, click new prompt. I'm just gonna give this a name, analyze data sets. The use case is data analysis. The output format is text. The app's gonna be empty. I haven't tested it yet. Under uh, the prompt, I'm just gonna paste without formatting like so. And under source, I wanna know where I found this, right? I go back to the email, scroll down, and oops, the source here is from analytical. So I'm just gonna copy here. And if I wanted to, I could just make a copy of the uh, URL of the email and paste it here for good measure. And that's it for the capture step. During a weekly review session, I would come back to this page to test out the prompt. And let's say I wanna make some adjustments. Before I do anything, I would make a duplicate of the prompt, move the original down to previous iterations, so I have a copy of the original. And let's say I, I realize um, for this prompt, it's missing a persona, act as a senior data analyst, for example, blah, blah, blah. And I believe this paragraph is unnecessary, delete it. And now I have the latest iteration of a prompt that I know that works. Under helpful hints, I would add some tips to remind myself. For example, this works best in Claude with .csv files. So up and uh, up here, I'm going to change the app to Claude and I'm going to change the type to my business. So now the next time I need a prompt to analyze data sets, I know exactly where to find it. By the way, I want to give a huge shout out to Hunter Bohm's video. I was inspired by his choice to use a code box to store prompts. For example, what he does is, for example, um, forward slash code. Uh, this is a code box and let's say I paste the prompt like so. Uh, a huge advantage to using a code box is there's this copy button here. You can easily use to copy and paste the prompts into AI tools. I personally still prefer using a normal callout box because if there are like placeholder variables, for example, insert a uh, data set, I can select this, press command and control E to visually differentiate it from the rest of a prompt, right? So that if I were to copy this into an AI tool like Claude, I'm visually reminded that I need to change this part of the prompt. And you can't do that in a code box. 
personal preference. The second example I wanna give is grouping similar tasks together. For example, in this page, if I scroll down, you'll see that there are two prompts in a single page. The reason being, they perform similar tasks. One is a basic name generator. I give an idea or message and you reply me with a list of catchy names. The second is a domain name generator. Um, I tell you what my company or idea does and you give me a list of domain names according to my prompt, right? So bucketing similar prompts like this in a single page just helps keep our database more streamlined and organized. Back in our main prompts database page, if you click into the external prompt libraries, you'll see that I've included a few links to public prompt libraries. Some are from big tech companies and some are user generated. You can browse these if you're looking for inspiration. The archived prompts page is exactly as it sounds. If you change the type of a prompt to archived, it will appear in this page. I know that was a lot of information. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. If you want to build your own command center in Notion, join the waitlist for my course. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.